approach to respiratory system uh, is important and it is interesting also if you are able to analyze the symptoms and make a decent clinical examination in a proper way so this is a discussion on approach to respiratory disease and uh, we will try to decode the respiratory symptoms here so um, you might be heard about uh, dr house series and you might have watched it also and i remember one of the dialogue that uh, dr house has sent, uh, said in one of the series that the patient had told us everything that we needed to know to make a correct diagnosis uh, he told it uh, told that after making a diagnosis uh, and retrospectively analyzing what were the symptoms of the patient so that uh, itself uh, gives us the importance of um, how important are the symptoms of a particular patient and most of the time it may help to reach a diagnosis and even plan the treatment of the patients so starting from the name of the patient and uh, the questions that we ask the answers that they give everything is important in making a clue to the diagnosis the name of the patient may not be uh, discussed in a case presentation uh, for uh, privacy reasons but when you are in clinical practice it is always better to remember the name of the patient next time you see greet him by his name this will help to improve the patient uh, doctor relationship and also help in follow up of the patient so age gender occupation everything is important and the first thing we will go one by one and uh, what is the importance of age in pulmonary practice or any other uh, practice for example with respect to pulmonology there are certain diseases which are much more common in older age group and there are certain other set of diseases which are more common in younger age group can you give some examples for diseases that are more commonly seen pulmonary diseases which are more commonly seen in old age patients okay so one is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or copd ild especially idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or ipf these are the diseases which are more commonly seen in the older age group and uh, younger age group miliary tb this is something which is more commonly seen in uh, younger age group tuberculous pleural effusion is a disease of youngsters usually 20s 30s or even 40s this is what we usually see connective tissue associated ild if it is there it usually present in the young or mid age group so lymphangioleomyomatosis it is a cystic ild you can remember it as an ild with some sort of cyst it is usually seen in patients especially females in the reproductive age group so these are the diseases which is more pertain to the youngsters there are certain diseases like uh, asthma or pneumonia other sorts of respiratory infections this can happen at any age you can understand that the infection can happen at any age asthma there is a common misbelief that it is a disease which usually starts in the childhood then there is less chance nothing like that we usually see the first onset of asthma in 20s 30s 40s etc and uh, so this idea will help you to get some clue from the age of the patient itself okay now what is the importance of occupation there is no need to say that the pulmonology is the most important subject or specialty which is linked to the external environment because the air that we breathe in is uh, directly in contact with the lungs and the respiratory tract so any patient who is working in a factory or mines or textile industries and other kind of uh, similar sort of uh, occupation they are hi at high risk of developing chronic bronchitis persistent cough or exacerbation of their underlying diseases like asthma or bronchitis there is something which is known as a work related asthma itself which aggravates during the work time and uh, which gets some relief when the patient is away from the work on the weekend so there is work related asthma and uh, uh, you might heard about asbestosis which is more common with respect to which uh, particular occupation that is ship demolition mining etc so occupational history is very important and there are some people who are involved in coir industries they can develop um, hypersensitivity pneumonitis as well as recurrent exacerbation of asthma or bronchi bronchitis so what are the cardinal symptoms of uh, pulmonology this is important and the cardinal symptoms includes cough expectoration hemoptysis breathlessness wheezing as well as chest pain so these are the cardinal symptoms plus or minus fever so whenever you are assessing or analyzing the clinical history of a patient don't miss any of these symptoms plus there are certain other symptoms that we will discuss in the coming up slide so why this uh, particular picture this is uh, none other than me as well as my daughter so my daughter is studying in uh, first standard and whenever she get dressed up in the morning and going before going to the school she ask me appa uh, will it rain today or not so if my answer is yes she will take her umbrella 
and if my answer is no she will not take the umbrella so far my prediction has remained good uh, decent enough uh, once it goes wrong she may not be even asking me the same question so my point is that uh, uh, what i would like to communicate is that my answer whether it is yes or no has got an implication for her that whether to take an umbrella or not that is why she is asking the question similarly whenever you are asking any sort of question to any patient that you are dealing with whatever be their answer you should have a uh, idea regarding what it points to or what should be the next step of action uh, keeping that in mind we will discuss each of the symptom so first of all chest pain uh, so if you are um, uh, living in a hostel uh, staying with your friends roommates etc or someone else in your family they are complaining of pain somewhere what will you ask you will ask uh, how intense is the pain how long uh, has been uh, you are suffering from the pain or how many days where is the site of the pain and uh, have you seen to your doctor took some medicines or any other measures to reduce your pain these are the questions that you usually use to your uh, beloved ones similarly to the patient also you will ask more or less the same thing the first thing is duration of the pain you have to know how long the pain was there not just to understand how many days or how many weeks as i told you earlier the answer of that particular uh, patient regarding the duration is important in giving us some clue regarding the etiology also let us see how for example the pain is acute of onset that is within few days what are the possibilities one thing is pneumonia acute onset of pain one possibility is pneumonia never forget pulmonary embolism in a patient with acute onset of pleuritic uh, or some sort of chest pain then you have got a, a patient who has sustained a, a fracture fall or some kind of trauma sustained a rib fracture or significant muscle injury he can develop sudden onset of pain another important one is pneumothorax can present with acute onset of pain then you have got uh, uh, other cardiac causes like a never forget this that is acute coronary syndrome aortic dissection etc can present with sub, uh, acute onset of pain there are other subacute onset uh, causes also it may be secondary to pleurisy that is in infection of or inflammation of the pleura with or without effusion so in a pleuritic pain effusion need not be always there there is something which is known as a dry pleurisy where pleural inflammation can cause pleuritic pain without much effusion what are the cause of chronic pain chronic pain is usually due to musculoskeletal cause like uh, for example costochondritis i have seen patients uh, complaining of uh, pain for more than months or even one to two years having uh, pain on the central chest it comes and go the usually uh, it's a case of costochondritis but it can vary uh, depending upon the case metastasis to the chest wall or to the ribs rib cage it can cause chronic pain so understand the duration as well as the etiology with respect to the uh, duration of uh, pain it varies that is the importance of that and the next thing is site of pain and uh, what are the uh, site based causes of pain for example uh, the pain can be central pain or the pain can be lateral pain now regarding the central pain what are the structures which is present in the central chest so it is nothing but the heart you have got the esophagus okay and you have got the uh, costochondral junction also and you have got the iota so what are, what could be the causes of central chest pain of course acute coronary syndrome classical example iota aortic dissection can cause pain on the central chest it can radiate to the back also costochondral junction as i already told you costochondritis esophagus severe reflux sometimes the patient may perceive it as pain itself or heartburn some may call it as heartburn and esophageal tear after uh, recurrent uh, severe vomiting these conditions can cause a central pain lateral chain, uh, chest pain it may be related to the nerve it may be related to the rib or the chest wall it may be related to the pleura also so the nerve it may be uh, due to a post herpetic neuralgia it may affect a particular thoracic dermatome you might have already learned it it is a very severe pain also rib fracture as i already told you it causes intense pain and uh, some sort of um, uh, fall uh, musculoskeletal injury that can cause lateral chest pain and um, sometimes the patient cough severely can sustain a rib fracture that may also result in pain so what are the pleural pathologies as i already told you pneumonia the exudation uh, in the and the infection in the peripheral lung parenchyma will eventually involve the pleura resulting in inflammation of the pleura and that is why there is a pleuritic pain in pneumonia of course pneumothorax as i already told you pulmonary embolism 
as well as pleurisy with or without pleural effusion this kind of pain usually happens in the lateral chest and there are certain pain uh, with radiation also for example a basal pneumonia pneumonia affecting the lower lobe of the lung can involve the diaphragmatic pleura also in in that way it may irritate the phrenic nerve which has got an innervation to the shoulder so in that case there can be pain which is radiating to the shoulder also and of course there is no need to say that acute coronary syndrome there is a radiation to the left uh, upper arm or the left uh, side of the chest and also the aortic dissection as i already told you it can radiate to the back also so understand the causes of the central chest pain as well as lateral chest pain nature of pain is very important and uh, the most classical one is pleuritic pain so how will you describe a pleuritic pain pleuritic pain is a localized pain first of all it is a localized pain it is a catching type of pain catching type of pain it's a sharp pain okay localized pain does not usually radiate and the most important thing is that when you take a deep breath or a uh, 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 the patient has got a cough then there is an increase in severity of the pain with deep inspiration or coughing let me ask you why because why there is pleuritic pain if there is inflammation of the parietal pleura and visceral pleura correct so when the patient is taking deep breath or coughing the lung is expanding so there is more uh, rubbing between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura so when they come more close towards together there is more rubbing between the inflamed and parietal uh, visceral and parietal pleura that because increase in the uh, pleuritic pain that is why there is the pleuritic pain increases with deep inspiration and coughing and uh, in patients with effusion eventually the fluid will collect will get collected in the pleural cavity so there seems to be a fluid layer between the visceral pleura and parietal pleura so as the fluid accumulates the patient will develop more and more exertional dyspnea but at the same time the pain may come down also okay so these are the characteristic of pleuritic pain and again if it involves the diaphragmatic pleura there can be radiation to the ipsilateral shoulder so a, a close differential diagnosis of uh, pleuritic pain is musculoskeletal pain or muscular pain but here the pain usually increases with pressure either the patient you or during examination if you apply pressure on that particular area the pain increases it is more likely to uh, the origin of the pain is more likely to be from the chest wall or from the musculoskeletal area and unlikely to be from the pleura and there may be associated features of trauma like uh, lung contusion or external injuries etc and never forget to examine rib tenderness in a patient with a lateral chest pain as i already told you the patient might have sustained a rib fracture also now regarding the chest heaviness chest heaviness is sometimes uh, the patient perceive the pain in different way sometimes the patient may perceive uh, asthma exacerbation as chest tightness or chest heaviness asthma exacerbation or acute coronary syndrome the patient may tell you that some weight has been kept on the left chest that may be the perception of the pain okay in addition to that all this kind of pain there is some sort of vague chest pain also atypical pain non uh, cardiac pain non pleuritic pain the patient may complaining of pain uh, different side of the body it may be a part of fibromyalgia or other uh, uh, other kind of um, rheumatological conditions so in that case uh, it's usually a vague atypical pain okay now regarding the intensity of the pain how intense is a is the particular pain depends on that particular patient as well as the perception pain perception capacity of that particular patient and um, so it is usually variable with the particular patient and uh, the rib fracture is a very intense pain that patient usually tell and the post herpetic neuralgia is very intense pain uh, these are the two very severe pain that uh, occurs over the chest and of course uh, if there is a case of severe pneumonia with significant pleurisy the pain can be excruciating so what are the aggravating and relieving factors of the pain of course the most of the pain as i told you the pleuritic pain increases with the deep inspiration and the musculos muscular pain increases with the application of pressure etc and uh, most of the time when the patient take rest this kind of pain slowly come down and as the effusion accumulates the pleuritic may pain may also slowly reduce in intensity okay now that's about the pain and uh, now regarding the cough cough is another important cardinal symptom of pulmonary uh, practice and uh, so just like to the pain or any other uh, symptom the duration uh, the type of the cough whether it is uh, dry or productive whether there is any associated postural variation whether there is any hemoptysis all these things that you should elicit 
from the patient okay so the duration of the cough is very important uh, can you tell me what are the different durations or what is acute cough subacute cough and chronic cough any cough lasting for less than three weeks is known as acute cough remember that and subacute cough means three to eight weeks and more than eight weeks is chronic cough okay so let me ask you what are the causes of acute onset of cough in my clinical practice or anyone's clinical practice the most common cause could be common cold what you call as the usually some should, should be some viral infections of the upper respiratory tract or upper respiratory infections acute bronchitis when it involves the lower respiratory tract also exacerbations of underlying asthma or copd or bronchitis there can be acute or sudden increase in the baseline cough so there is an acute change in the character of cough there of course anaphylaxis uh, laryngeal edema foreign body aspiration can cause sudden onset of cough vocal cord spasms pneumonia any other infections these all causes acute onset of cough subacute cough is practically uh, any cause of acute cough if it is not improving or uh, subsiding in the natural course can progress to subacute or even chronic cough for example uh, when the patient develops an upper respiratory infection the sinus gets congested the fluid in the sinus slowly drips down to the throat what is what do you call that it is a post nasal drip usually a cause of upper airway cough okay and it can be subacute or even chronic and um, uh, sometimes it can be post infectious bronchiolitis an infection or a bronchitis has happened the fever has settled but the cough is persisting one of the most common history or uh, uh, complaint that we hear during our routine opds post infectious bronchiolitis or post infectious cough it may take a two or uh, four weeks to settle so subacute cough chronic cough it can be secondary to copd bronchitis bronchial asthma uh, drug induced causes can you give one example of a drug that can cause persistent dry cough angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors drug induced cough then the patient is having significant reflux acid reflux what do you call it as laryngopharyngeal reflux disease laryngopharyngeal reflux disease or reflux induced cough all these are chronic causes of cough